There are a lot of things I can tell you that would justify my lack of concentration lately. But the only thing that will make any sense is the fact that I do not sleep. Well, it's just that sleep more and more often is becoming one of those things I cannot afford. And at nights such as these, the measures of time become undistinguishable as agitation begins to slither past my awakened mind. Out there, over the bridge lie the shattered remnants of pleasant hallucinations frozen in place. Dreams prematurely laid to rest steps away from the gutter. Shadows know to stay away from such places but I feel at home in this level. Down here, hours pass without notice which first led me to believe it was only my imagination. But soon enough, I began to see things lurking just beyond my eyesight. And I started noticing that the longer I stare at these walls, the more I feel they stare back. Institutionalized, they call it. And yes, I guess you can call this life I am living an institution. Another thing I've noticed is that the first thing that begins to leave you is your memory. But one thing I'll always remember are the words old man Chekhov used to say to me. What was it again? Ah yes, any idiot can face a crisis, it's day to day living that wears you out. And when night and day begin to blur together, you lose track of it all. Soon you'll find yourself just like me, aimlessly meandering. There it is, the false face of security. A life of safety belts and fire escapes keep a mind functioning, fragile. A whisper of reassurance that when blown by the slightest breeze transform dreams into rubble. But I am not all twisted. There are other things other than my conscious or lack of that keeps me awake. Lights bleed through shut eyelids and the subdued hum expelled by fluorescent lights. First soft whimpers, then shrieks, and then yells resonate through the dark and into my room, always recommending a cure. The name of salvation, the face that best suits me, but I can never make up my mind. It seems the only voices I'm hearing tonight are the wrong ones. One night, a word crept up on me delivered by red lipstick that shone a light in a place that should have never been illuminated. You all know the word I'm talking about. It's the one that makes it easy to ignore it all. The one that makes it easy to let go. The one that makes cold places warm and too hot to withstand at times. Yeah, these years may be young, but the skin is burnt, bruised, and scarred. But still, although I know the word I heard that night was a genuine lie, I always fall for it every time. My celly once told me that if I write my name on these here walls, I'll always come back to read them. 
He also said, once I get my first hit, I'll always be addicted. And I always wait for the next day, not wanting to miss the moment of when it will happen again. Ah, in they come, at first only distinct shapes, blurs of what slowly turn out to be faces, the vehicle of all that is wrong with the world and the basic theory of all that is needed, companionship, companionship that knows how to administer consoling words and how to delicately caress a face with the swift swing of the back of a hand, breathing blinking contradictions with arms, legs, and liquid inside. People just like me, except they are better at hiding the truth. They are better at disguising the core of what it means to be human. They keep concealed the idle assignment, the mechanism that is said to keep an anatomical composite of flesh and bones occupied between states of unconscious clarity. But this fact alone is not the problem. There is no one exempt from this. The problem lies in not accepting this, in refusing to acknowledge this, in believing there is more. But I know there is nothing out there. There is no solution. No answer, no savior, no light at the end of the tunnel. Why do we even bother sometimes? And my humble guess is because we are bored. Because we have nothing better to do. That's why I let my hair grow long, then I cut it. I drink one day and I preach the next. I treat people bad and expect to be treated like a king. Why you ask? Why? Why? Well, because I have nothing better to do. I am just like the rest. Wandering and looking for the next best thing the next big break. Yes, I'm chasing that shadow, that dragon, that light, that old familiar feeling, those old familiar words of reassurance. But today seems different. The air feels different. And in the sea of faces, there seems to be a certain calm. But this calm only lasts a few seconds. One thing you must remember is never to trust the calm sea, for it will soon lash great waves of numbness at the exact moment when you begin to feel comfortable. For some, this time comes too late, and they do not survive the surge. For others, it doesn't come at all. For me, it comes frequently. I have been there many times. And today, as soon as I begin to feel content with the way that I am, it hits me upside the head. It comes from the dark. It crept up on me the exact same way that word crept up on me so long ago.